Hi, this is Bina007, back for another 10 minutes spoiler-free movie review. And today I'm talking to you about The Water Diviner, which is Russell Crowe's directorial debut and a really profoundly moving and intelligent film about the Gallipoli campaign, whose 100th anniversary it is this year. This is a battle so oh, tragic in its nature that it's one that we learn in school in Britain and I'm sure in Australia and New Zealand. And the way it's portrayed here is a tale of feckless British high command sending in Australian and New Zealand troops to try and take a piece of land in Turkey um, as the Ottoman Empire is the Allies' enemy in that war. And just really up against tactical odds they could never over overcome because they were invading a beach heavily mined having to scale very high cliffs and it was just a tactically ugh, impossible position to take and so after months of horrific warfare they retreated this film however picks up four years later and it's really a film about what happens to those left behind we have a father played by russell crowe called joseph connor and he leaves his farm in Australia to try and find the bodies of his son in Turkey and, and bring them back home to his wife, who was literally driven mad with grief and committed suicide. His journey is a perilous one because Turkey is still in a state of war. And I suppose it reminded me this film of the fact that the Ottoman Empire, the crumbling of that empire and the wars for territory around it, predated World War I and went on afterwards. So he's entering a, a territory that's very conflicted, that is being fought over by the Greeks and the Turks. There's a rising nationalist movement, the Kemalist movement in Turkey, and it's unstable and shifting territory. Even to get to Gallipoli, to the scene of the battle, he needs a military pass, which he can't get. So he sort of has to smuggle himself in and is really put in the middle of a difficult situation where Australian and British troops are trying to find the graves of all these men and identify where they fell and need the help of their old enemy, the Turks, to find them. And this leads to perhaps the most fascinating relationship in the entire film, which is that between Joseph Connor and a Turkish general, Ottoman general called Major Hassan, played by Yilmaz Erdogan, who was also in Once Upon a Time in Anatolia. Fantastic film, that. And it's almost, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a, I don't want to use the cliche of the buddy movie, but it is a movie in which these two men um, on opposing sides of the war, the general whose job it was to kill this chap's sons, form this uneasy and actually rather deep friendship. And in that respect, it's a hopeful film because it's a film that acknowledges the hurt on both sides. And although this is a film really about the Australian experience of that battle, it again and again it shows you how many troops were killed on the Ottoman side of the war, the 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 complete breakdown of trust on that side and you know, the the widows it's left behind. And I find that to be tremendously even handed and humane. I love the treatment of that. And through these two men, we see this Australian farmer navigate his way through the delicate politics that are occurring and really into the heart of the nationalist struggle in Turkey to hopefully find what could be the remains of his sons. And I'll say no more because that will undermine the emotional impact of what then occurs. I think the treatment of that relationship, the acting is beautiful. The filming of Turkey is just unbelievable. The, the cinematographer on this film is Andrew Lesney, who shot the Lord of the Rings movies. And he really captures that quality of light on the Bosphorus, the inside of the Blue Mosque. But just, oh, there's just something really tangible and authentic about the way Turkey is portrayed. So kudos to Russell Crowe for directing that. I also love the way in which the battle is handled. It's not shown... Um, up front in a sense like it's not that you have a set piece battle scene it's it you come back to it in flashes as as the father joseph connor reads the diary of his son describing what happened and it really is horrific the snatches that you see ugh, they don't pull any punches as is right if you want to honor the memory of these men you have to experience if only for a second what they went through and to see a field of battle strewn with bodies 
the moans of men bleeding out dying. That's something I won't forget too quickly, and nor should I, even though it's only, I'm sure if you added together the minutes within the, the two-hour running time of this film, it wouldn't add up to much. What has come up with or against a little bit more criticism in this film is the treatment of, it's not so much a love story, it's a sort of a microcosm or another reflection of this tale of grief and hope. Um, and that is the relationship of Joseph Connor with the Turkish widow he meets, played by Olga Kurielenko, a Bond girl of recent years, in fact. And she is a fascinating character because she refuses to acknowledge that her husband probably also died in Gallipoli. And it's a very, it's not even a courtship. I mean, it's a very delicate friendship that they strike up. And again, you know, you're showing this Australian guy with the best of intentions come up against a profoundly different culture. And there's a very interesting scene where he kind of intervenes in what he perceives to be an act of abuse. And she tells him very sternly, you know, this isn't your place. You don't understand what's going on here. And in a sense, that relationship, although some critics have seen it as indulgent or cliched or sort of out of place in a war film, I think is a delicate microcosm of, of this wider struggle of what the hell were all these Australian and New Zealand troops doing in Turkey in the first place? You know, what is it that brings um, these kind of great empire wars to happen? So I think it's profoundly well handled and delicate. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing prurient about it at all. And actually, I would go further. I would say that if you wanted to boil down this movie to one word or one uh, motivation it is to show hope that amidst all this battle and all this disaster and tragedy and loss of life there is hope we see that in the relationship between major hassan and joseph connor we actually see it in the relationship between major hassan and an aussie uh, lieutenant colonel called cyril hughes who's played by jay courtney um, insofar as in the midst of sorting out these war graves, they can say, oh, you know, I was once an architect and I was once a civil engineer. This sort of this finding of commonality and humanity between them. And I think it's very important that we see that if this is a movie about moving through grief, getting closure, acknowledging what's happened and moving forward, we have to have something to move forward to. And to that extent, the fact that Joseph Connor, Russell Crowe's character, and Olga Kurielenko's character, Aisha, can sit together and just have a meal and smile and just relate to each other, I think is incredibly important because it shows us something that's worth living for. And after all, isn't that ultimately the meaning of taking closure after grief is to then move forward? So overall, I think The Water Diviner is just a profoundly, I mean, it's incredibly moving. I cried very much in the final 20 mu minutes of this film and I defy anyone not to really. It's incredibly intelligent in the way it, lay, it handles a very complex layer of conflict or layers of conflict that are occurring in the Turkey of this period. And it's, it's just very respectful of the different cultures it's encountering. And to that extent, I think it's, it's a really great film. Um, and I just cannot see... I can understand why superficially or at first the knee-jerk reaction to some of that romance stuff might be, ah, oh, what's it doing here? But I think the more you think about it, the more it absolutely 100% thematically makes sense in this film. So, you know, kudos to Russell Crowe. Who knew? He's a, as good a director as he is an actor. And that really is high praise coming from me.